Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco and uh, got a few extra props today, huh? First of all, I uh, had a great time last night at SeaWorld. Uh, I want to give them a shout out here to begin everything off. Um, they had a VIP event for the social media club and some uh, hotels um, and PR marketing people here in San Antonio. Uh, they, had a, they had a great spread for us. Saw a couple great shows. Uh, it was really nice. It was the preview for their summer nights thing. Uh, my Me Today video on Mars.me, that's my other website, my personal website, uh, my Me Today video has all the footage from that, so you're more than welcome to head over there. Just go to marz.me, click on the Me Today tab. It'll be up by the time this stuff is up. So, as a matter of fact, it's uploading right now to Viddler. Yeah, I have another account on Viddler called Mars. You know, hey. So, um... So it was a great time last night, and uh, so that that brings me into my uh, my next thing. My next thing, uh, what you see right here. One of my followers on Leet Wine on thirteen thirty seven Wine, and now also one of my personal followers, a uh, local guy named George Godfrey. He was kind enough to give me two years worth of Wine Enthusiast magazine. How cool is that? You know, somebody I meet through Twitter uh, has, has also has a, uh, an interest in wine and a passion in wine. And he's helping a brother out. A little HBO. I'm going to put this to good use. I cannot wait to delve into this. So uh, I'll have his uh, Twitter name a little bit later. Uh, and then I'll talk about that in a second. All right, so ooh, don't want that to all fall over. All right, so what are we doing today? Well, got the Jersey boy here. I know I don't sound like I'm from Jersey, but I also don't necessarily sound like I'm from Texas, so I'm kind of like in between. So where I was born it was in Jersey. And in a trip about five years, no, four years ago, back in 2005, fall 2005, took a trip out there to, to, to uh, hang out with the family. It was a little Thanksgiving thing and all that. And we made a visit to a winery called Balich. Because I got a little, a little accent there on the sea. They're a winery in New Jersey, and they do they grow all the all the grapes in New Jersey. They have uh, 27 different wines that they uh, produce. I won't go through all of them, but uh, if you go to BalichWinery.com, um, that's where they're at, and they list all their wines and all that stuff. So I remember going there. And doing uh, doing a little wine tasting because I was just starting to get into wine on a serious note, um, and we went there, tasted a bunch of wines. We were like the only people there for a while, but then some other people showed up, and the people there were super nice, uh, very informative. I asked lots of questions, and um, this was one of the wines that we had. We 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 have this a pomegranate wine and I think a cream sherry. But I decided to do the cream red. Just because out of all the wines, I want to do something that I was pretty sure this was American varietals. All right, so before I get too in-depth in all that, let's go ahead and do the tasting of the wine. Um, I think I liked it back then. I don't remember, but I do remember. The one thing I do remember is making a comment. It may not have been about this wine. It might have been about one of the other American varietal wines. But I remember making a comment saying something like, I understand why most wines are not made from American varietals just because. So I'll go through that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and check it out. Um, so it's the Balich Cream Red Non-Vintage. So uh, even though we bought this in 2005, this is not necessarily a 2000, um, say 4 or 2003 vintage. It could be grapes from anything. Um, just so you see what it says, it's, it's called an American Cream Red Red Wine. Special blending makes this a delicious semi-sweet wine, red wine, and especially fine after dinner wine. So uh, it's called a demi sec. So it's somewhat sweet, half sweet. Um, here's the label again. Paid. Well, you can buy it on the website for eight fifty. I don't know what we paid for, but it's eight dollars and fifty cents on the website. So let's go ahead and check it out. Man, I can really smell smell a lot of stuff out of it. Now I don't know if you can really tell because the lighting is a little bit different. Um, I mean, this camera does, by the way, he's a flip Mino. It's an amazing camera for what it is, by the way. Um, it's got this 
Well, first of all, you can really see through it a lot. Like, a lot you can see through it. Um, it's got kind of, and it could be just I don't really have it against a white background. No? It's kind of got a, um, a rust color to it. I don't know if you can get that too much. I can kind of get the white background in there. It's kind of got a little rusty color to it. So, that's interesting. Oh, by the way, the varietals in here are the three American varietals are Niagara, and I even ha I even went to the web went to a website to to make sure I pronounce this right, Catawba, and Concord. So Catawba, yeah, Niagara, Catawba, and Concord are the three grapes that he used in this variety. I don't have the I don't have the uh, percentages. I forgot to ask them that, but I did email them asking them what the varietals were because there was no information anywhere, and they were kind enough yesterday to email it back. Okay, man, right off the bat. Grape, you know, grape juice. Like, seriously. Not even just, actually not grape juice, grape jelly. Grape jelly. Like, you, just any regular old Concord grape jelly, right? But lots of sugar, a lot, very sweet. Remember, this is meant to be an after-dinner wine. So, it is not meant to be drunk um, or drank uh, necessarily with with dinner. So yeah, lot, lots of grape jelly. Lots of grape jelly. So you just, that's, that's really the overpowering and just sugar. So that's, you know, remember that's what this wine's about. It's not meant to be, you know, stinky and earthy and stuff like that. episodes I commented about leaving us some um, Welch's grape juice out to ferment. That's what this is. Take it for what it's worth. It's very sugar-fied. It's, it's very, you can, you can really taste the grapes. And, and they're really, and remember, I'm not really sophisticated in all this. And that's hopefully where we're going to go with all this. But um, I don't get a lot of sophistication, a lot of complexity in, in the wine. And I'm assuming that's the intent. Um, remember, this is an American varietal grape. This is, they, make, they make other wines with other varietals, and I do remember them being good. So Now, with all that said, there's definitely some tannins here. This is not a this is not a dessert wine in the sense of, you know, uh, the traditional like ice vines and uh, uh, moscatos and stuff like that, where they're supposed to be really sweet and not much tannins. You get tannins here. Um, the alcohol, I forgot to look at that. It's twelve percent, so I mean it's right in the range of table wine. Yes, it's a semi-sweet wine. You got a little bit of got a little bit of dryness, okay. Uh, it's called demi sec, which actually demi sec, if I remember right, it actually means uh, half dry, not half sweet. But um, got a little bit of tannins in there. So I mean, I could see definitely this is an after dinner wine. You you, you want to drink this? Think of it in, in, in the class of ports and sherries that are, that are that are kind of sweet, not the dry ones. Or demi sec, okay. So that's what it is. I don't know if these are late harvest. Well, they can't be too late harvest because they would have a lot more alcohol. But you know what? I mean, it's it's tasty. You know, I like it for what it is. I like it. Um, you have to look at. To me, I have to look at this in a different light than a Cabernet Sauvignon, a Pinot Noir, or even even a, a sweet, a semi you know semi sweet wine. 
um, just because it has that, that, that grape jam, that grape jelly overpowering flavor. It's something that I would maybe drink a glass of um, after dinner, maybe with some desserts, uh, pair it up. Probably would pair up really, you know what? You'd probably pair up with like some peanut butter crackers. No lie. I guarantee you it would probably pair up. You know what? We got some peanut butter crackers. I've been meaning to do a peanut butter and jelly sandwich pairing. Mom came up with that idea. So we got some Lance Toasty Crackers, peanut butter crackers. I love these things. These are not the ones that had the, the issue a few months ago. Exactly. I mean, it's uncanny. Exactly. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Awesome. So, I mean, all right, so what am I going to score this one? You know, I'm going to give it the merits of just a wine that you would drink after dinner and for what it is, $8.50. I'm going to give it some American varietals. I know I'm kind of dancing around here trying to figure out what I want to score it. You know, I'm probably going to give it, I'm going to give it an 86. Now, it might be a little high. One, because I'm pretty sure the guys at Ballast are going to watch this. And I don't want to disappoint them. I don't want them, I don't want to panic because it's not a bad wine. <clears throat> but I'm trying to put it in a different class. I'm trying to, you know, 86 is not a bad score. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not like an 89 that I had the other day. Or it's definitely not in the 90s. But I also think it's definitely better. And as far as flavor and, 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 and what it brings, even though it's pretty one-dimensional, I think it's better than some of those 82 and 83 wines I've been drinking. And it's 850. I mean, it's not a bad price, you know. I, mean, I don't know how much shipping is, but if you're by the if you're by the winery, um, I'd just stop by. You know, it, it, it's kind of a novelty thing. You know, it's a, they said it's one of their best-selling wines, and it's one of the oldest wines they've been doing. Um, now, just a couple things. They were founded in 1966. I was founded in 67, by the way. Um, and like I said, it's one of their oldest and best-selling wines they have. And you know what, really, if, if you pair it with the right things, like the peanut butter, I mean, it's the obvious one, you know, it's peanut butter and jelly. But if you paired it with some, with some, with some desserts like that, maybe some nuts, uh, certain cheeses, I mean, I wouldn't put it with, like, a chocolate cake. I mean, that'd be, that'd be a lot. That'd be a lot of sugar, and you know. But maybe something light, uh... Or something that has like a nutty flavor to it, you know, you could, you could, you could definitely do that. Maybe some, um, we have some nut cookies or whatever. Probably go well with that too. So, um, just one of those things you you play off the flavors that way, and and that's what you do this with. So, eighty six. I'll give it an eighty six. You know, it's not bad. Okay, so. Other shout out. Just got this in the mail like a few minutes ago. A friend of mine, Donna, up in Chicago. Um, you know, she went to OU. It's all right. Um, obviously, I went to Texas. You know, I saw the Texas thing yesterday. Um, bought me this book. It's called Taste uh, A Life in Wine. And it's Anthony Terlato. I admit I've never heard of this guy, and, and I feel bad because, you know, you know reading the inside jacket, uh, this is somebody, how could I have not have heard of him in, in at least a few years of wine that I've been, you know, reading and, and tasting wine and watching television, you know, watching podcasts and listening to podcasts. By the way, have I mentioned Wine for Newbies? I think I did in the very first episode. Wine for Newbies, William Wilson, Bill Wilson. Excellent. Um, but uh, so this is his life story. Of how he, you know, he was a kid from Brooklyn, a family moved to Chicago, 
Um, he was, you know, worked in the family liquor store. He eventually, you know, worked his way up, uh, became very important in wine, in the wine field, or in the wine business, and uh, really introduced Americans, or probably more the American media, uh, but into how to taste wines and how to pair good wines. Not, you know, it's not all Manischewitz, you know, and uh, uh, Blue Nun and, and, and whatever. Uh, all, all the stuff you remember seeing during Christmas, you know, that was when everyone bought wine. So uh, I'm very excited to read that. Um, hopefully I'll get it done. Maybe I'll, feed, maybe I'll do it over, this, over the weekend. All right, what else? Um, so again, I do recommend it, but for what it is. Don't expect something complex. Don't expect, a, uh, don't expect some 92-point effort. You know, just for what it is, it's, it's kind of a, in some ways, it's a little bit of a novelty because it is American grapes. So again, American grapes... They're, uh, I think, the Venice Lambrusca. Lambrusco, right? So you have a bunch of grapes that are in that, that, are in that variety or in that family or genus or whatever it is and when you talk about biology and all that. So they are the grapes that are native to America. Uh, the Vinifera, Viniferia or Vinifera, uh, part of, of the grape family, those are all the ones that we're familiar with from Europe. Um, you know, with Cabernet and, and Chardonnay and Zinfandel and Syrah and all those grapes. And those are the ones that tend to produce better wines or more complex wines, have a lot of different flavors and all that. So this is why I made that comment of, now I understand why. I got the sniffles. I understand why American grapes are not really used to make complex wines. And that's what this is not. This is not a complex wine. Um... And, and the Concord grape is the, is the most well-known. It's the one they probably, I think they use in all like the grape jellies and jams. So that's the one they use. Uh, let's see. So it's Friday. A little bit, you know, kind of laid back the past couple days. Uh, Monday, we'll have another episode up. Got a bunch of good wines that we got from HEB Plus. And Tuesday, look for the second uh, installment of Salming A School. I think we're going to go over tasting wine. Um, I'm not at Total expert, but yeah, I know more than the average person. But we'll go through the book smarts of this stuff, okay? You know, why you taste the things you taste and, and the techniques and why you do what you do so that when you do it a lot, you start you start getting the, the, the bouquet, you start getting the palate, and that's what we're going to go through. We're going to go through the, the book smarts or the, the book part of, uh, of why you do this and how it all that works. Let's see what else. Uh, as always, click on the ads. Do any donations if you want. Um, tell your friends. Tweet me up. Friend me up. Subscribe to iTunes. I got the button on there. It takes you to opens up iTunes. Takes you to the page. You can, so you can hit subscribe. So you can get that automatically downloaded. Um, yeah, you'll have to go to the website for doing anything else like read comments. You know, there's comments down there, right? Um, so, so if you want to do that, if you want to click on the books. Um, remember, I've got some excellent book suggestions there. I'll, pr I'll probably add this to it too uh, over the weekends once I finish reading it. And accessories, there's you know a bunch of stuff. I've got the vacuum vent on there. Uh, remember, I highly suggest you get a vacuum vent. Definitely going to vacuum vent this because we're probably not going to drink it all in one sitting. We'll probably drink it over a few days. And that's why you get a vacuum vent so that you can store your wine. Um, you can store. Another little trick if you can't get the vacuum vent, just take the cork and put it back in there. Okay, and make sure it's a nice tight seal. And any wine, white or red, put it in the refrigerator. And what it does is it keeps it cool. And remember we talked about, you know, you don't want to refrigerate your wines when you drink them. But to store them, you can put it in the refrigerator. And what it does is it slows down the, the oxygen. It slows down the mo molecules so it doesn't oxidize as fast. So when you have like half a bottle of wine, you still got all that air in there. But if you put it in there, you keep it cool. Oxidation happens slower. That's why we refrigerate our food, folks. Same thing for wine. Wine is a food. All right, uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for stopping by or stopping in. I don't know. I think I, maybe I'll do stopping in because it is kind of the house, and you're, I'm inviting you into the home. Thanks for stopping in, and we'll see everybody again next time.